Freaking made it all the way up here. That's so crazy. Something tells me that's probably not supposed to be unlocked and anybody's supposed to be up there, but it's unlocked so I went and had a quick peek. No harm done. Buck Mountain Lookout. This lookout actually has quite the history. It started in 1911 with just a log cabin up here. And it had a crow's nest built up in one of these big tall trees around here. And that's what they would actually use to climb up into and do fire watch for this whole entire area. It was crazy enough to drive up here in 2020. I couldn't imagine making it up here by foot in 1911 and actually building a log cabin in a fire lookout. That's just insane. But then in 1934, they actually built it into a four post 20 foot tower 
In fact, in and around 1942, it was used as an aircraft warning system. So I'm assuming that because of World War II, there was military posted up here keeping an eye out for any possible foreign aircraft that might be entering our territory during the World War II. And then in 1960, it was actually built into the 40-foot four-post tower that we see here today. Then in 2015, the worst wildfire in Washington state history burned right through this area. Four fires have merged into one monstrosity with its fiery tentacles reaching in all directions. 121,000 hectares of the Cascade Mountains have been scorched. It's a group of fires in central Washington, now the largest in that state's history. Hundreds of firefighters joining the front lines. In fact, the fire got so close to the tower that it actually heated up one of the through bolts that held everything together. It heated it up so hot and proceeded to burn out one of the posts, leaving the whole entire stand leaning on just three posts. Just a few years ago, the DNR came up and fully restored the tower as we see it here today. It was a hell of a drive getting up here. That right there might top the list for one of the craziest drives that I've ever done here inside the van. But it was well worth it, that's for sure.
as I was sitting here sipping my whiskey after my meal, I was thinking back to what it must have been like back in 1911. I mean, people found this on foot. It was a lot different time back then. And then when they decided to build a road up here, I mean, it wasn't, you know, last year with all of today's technology and construction equipment. I mean, who knows how long this road's been here, but it was back when construction equipment was very primitive, I'm sure. I mean, you can tell by the road. I mean, we think we've got it hard now with all our things that we've got to deal with in the daily grind. we got to go to work every day and the kids are screaming and yelling and man, life is just tough. But think back to 1911. Back then in this area, the people that settled this and figured all this out, that's some hard life right there. And then to come up here and spend months at a time completely secluded in isolation. When I think about that, I think about what I consider my problems these days. and it doesn't hold a candle to what people went through back then. I think we all need to sit and think about that. <clears throat> what our forefathers went through to give us what we all have today and the comforts that we have today, but yet we still complain about the most minimal shit. <laughs> I don't know. That's my rant for the evening. I think it's just the fact that getting up here into situations like this make you stop and think about stuff like that. It's important to do that once in a while. Because then it might make us a little more grateful for the things that we do have. I struggle with that. I go through what I think are hard times and trying to find my way. But moments like this are humbling when you realize we have a lot to be appreciative of. It's going to be a beautiful night for some stars out, that's for sure. This is farewell to Buck Mountain. Yesterday, like I keep saying, was one hell of a drive. A special shout out to the little Vanagon that could. Made it all the way up here. Little two wheel drive Vanagon. Getting up here to spots where most people wouldn't think about bringing their four wheel drive. 
but the Vanagon made it up here. And look at this. Look at this view. At 6,135 feet, it just does not get any better. But now it's time to call this van adventure a wrap. And I gotta make my way back down this goat trail and out of here. Go hit the open road and see what adventure comes next. If you guys have made it this far in the video, consider subscribing. Make sure and hit the little bell next to the subscribe button. That's what's gonna notify you anytime videos like this are uploaded. For those of you subscribers that have been with me for some time, I appreciate all of the support. I really couldn't have done this without you guys. Make sure and hit the like button. Make sure and comment in the comment section down below and share it with everybody you know. That's the kind of stuff that gets these videos out to the masses. All right guys, I'm hitting the open road. Peace out, keep on trucking.